Attention gamers, spoiler alert the game you are about to see was a fat L because as is tradition all four of my inting idiots had K's that were getting shown the F up by their own D's as you would have thought they were the cast of national treasure on an endless search for this mythical thing called a brain cell but why bore you with talking about such a daily occurrence in league? <laughs> This video is going to focus on the dysfunctional relationship between the two who I have now nicknamed Rolling Rock Biggie Smalls, and Aerosimp Tupac, because boy did they hate each other and boy did they both end up dead a lot. So as I so elegantly started to summarize what you are about to see in chat, Biggie and Tupac had just met in Champ Select one of the millions of bastard-like births to another ratchet-ass rift relationship taking place daily and no it did not take long for these two to develop a deep and unquenchable hatred for one another because taint sniffer Tupac wouldn't shut up about farm which added a lot of irony to the plot because he missed half the uncontested creeps that were served to him on a platter anyway copium while Biggie Bowler here was quote unquote bad, and as a neutral third party just trying to win one effin' game, I can confirm this alleged badness. Anyways the events that follow will document how I am convinced League of Legends is now a social experiment seeing how people like me react to the most absurd and negative IQ arguments costing them their game so I hope you enjoy because god knows I did not. Now to set the scene I was playing the top hatted hottie mid in an attempt to sequel my one shot snipe build that looked like this plus nothing gets a lady's lower lips more lubed up than hearing her husband yelling shit about fuzzy cuffs at his computer and I owe at least that much to my wife so early on we get into this weird standoff where I am baiting the wind shitter toward my bob the bowling jungler while knowing there's a color me caribou touching herself in the other shrubs but Ramus doesn't read maps and I have the reflexes of a dead sloth so I spectate him taunt the twin of he who shits wind before one last nibble gets in the kill and the popcorn grease all over my body shows I'm guilty of spectating that debacle but a Q auto auto flash into smash dat stag combo makes it all worth. Then I desperately want to go on a shopping spree but a combination of me having double buffs and a bad case of FOMO on a red robe genocide makes me overstay but luckily for me this two sword two brain cell degenerate also has fear of missing out on doing something dumb as shit as he double douche dashes into the danger zone for a quick game of fruit ninja only to be sent back to his tethered bloody reality lit on fire and dead af. But on to the dude who Freud would classify as having gotten weaned off mom's titty milk too late in life as you will oftentimes find him entering fights and then standing so still you would think he's auditioning to be a character in Bloons Tower Defense 76 and despite his unyielding slash unmoving focus he falls short. And the league chat post fight interview reveals that his only regret in that seemingly one handed attempt at a team fight was missing a cannon wave for that. And I guess he was too busy mourning the missed caddy creep that he probably wouldn't have last hit regardless to do other things like look at his map as the skip simping stag comes down and he goes straight back to his mannequin challenge strategy giving the walking boner quite a tough target to hit as he does not skip a beat or take a step until the day that he dies. So at this point I'm aware that the skill level of our bot is on par with a blind flamingo wearing mittens meaning my thought process is to head top you know fire and ace up this flaming obese goats a hole only to see Tweedledee and Tweedledum up there losing miserably to an ox and the ghost of his dead ancestors past as my ult with dark harvest mind you does about as much damage as a fruit fly hitting a concrete wall so I decide to continue this war on foot. All while I am starting to get the feeling that our ADC is one of the super common self-approved challenger league coaches too worried about what everyone else is doing wrong to realize enemies literally think has been tabbing out during fights but anyways I find fat uncle buck rubbing a quick one out in the shrubs so I bear trap his ass then throw my net away because it was weighing me down to which I should be celebrating but I see that the man child who plays this game to get in petty fights about anything at all like he is the Ben Shapiro on the rift gets the attention he cries every game for making me think this toddler is about to tantrum. But then I see this which perks me up like a saggy tit in the presence of silicon as I'm thinking toxic yes but maybe he walks the walk only for the replay to reveal that this dude just got so lucky I would have advised him to tab out and buy lotto tickets on the spot as that triple was the result of one cue and a few more stand still sentry turret autos after which he informs us that he was entitled to such a bounty after missing so much cs and what makes this the fattest meme to me is that after crying like a baby with a boiling spoon stuck to its gooch all game about how important his farm is. The very next wave he misses 4 of the 6 uncontested hoodlums like Jesus if I could reach through the monitor pull this guy's earlobe with the fervor of a lion and then bitch slap his face I would've but I stay quiet because I know feeding into this gypsy siren's little pissy attitude will only start a fight kind of like exactly what happened when our dumb shit Ramus decided to poke the bitch bear as an argument over literally nothing has escalated into something that would appear on the next Geneva conventions meeting agenda all while I am trying to ignore the two chatter fucks knowing that my win condition is to simply wait for for the goon gales to make this moron act symptomatically before booping his silly snoot a few times and launching a long boy his way for the kill. 
and so me popping more than a peep in a microwave while seeing the mental state of my team deteriorate is what prompted my next statement in my post-game summary where I said we took a game that was free, like using honey free, and lost. And so here is where I need to correct myself because using honey doesn't make things completely free but rather less expensive and that's why it's still relevant to this video because similar to my teammates having no brains, using this browser extension to save money during online purchases is a no-brainer. Consider this, your younger sister somehow got her hands on Mr. Beast's credit card which by the property of older brothership means it's yours now so you're eyeing up a dank new green truck and the salesman is like you live in LA so that piece of crap will cost you 150 and you are on the fence until this handsome devil shows up playing the part of honey as he says 150 my ass I found all these coupons which makes it only 65 so you get your truck and spend the extra money on Tesla stock which means a few years later you get a slightly different version of that truck plus a big house and tons of good looking chicks that swear they don't just hang out with you for your money. But that never happened because you gave your sister the extra money so she bought tickets to Romeo and Juliet on Broadway and long story short she's in the hospital because her and her boyfriend accidentally poisoned themselves role playing it one night but the moral of the story is that honey is the hero here because it's not just a proverbial well groomed chat it's a free to download browser extension that works on tons of sites scours the web for coupons and saves you money without you having to lift a finger. I've been using it myself for years now and would approve of you going to join honey.com slash rap to get it for free today. Now tying back into the other no-brainers in this video. Starting with pretty boy set up top who you haven't met yet but the backstory here is that he had a pissed off placenta in the womb with him that bullied the shit out of his fragile fetus brain and the result is explained by his behavior so I decide to board the 11 o'clock tantrum tomato and sure enough Ramis is freaking late but we wait because I hate that this fat nethered mate has been fed all game on a silver plate and now he's scaled at an unfair rate meaning if I would've gone in alone I would've met a similar fate. Hashtag worth the wait. Meanwhile south side this thresh has his autograph mad life jersey on trying to make plays only to be left hanging hard and stuck looking stupid as shit but if you handed this Varus a kite he would wait for the most windless day in history to try and fly that shit as his stand still antics land his bitch bow back in base once again. So the R team's pitiful excuse for a porcupine head spot to try and salvage the situation by calling in his fat cousin Hank the Scuttle with a big stanky taint but unfortunately you see the reason why brain balance ads are littered with pictures of this moron so despite quite the optical vomit out of Project Calamari nothing ends up happening. That is until our little toxic Tommy here leads the charge into I'm a dumb ass Phil letting Lantern Larry forcefully introduce him to a temperamental tower that turrets his zombie walking ass down. To which the two dead bitches bicker about whose performance will leave their mom more embarrassed and I don't take sides in pointless wars despite thinking Virgin Varus was crafting a decent argument here as I had more important matters to attend to like hitting this skipping stag with a flash Q auto into let's all take a knee to mourn the death of this outplayed little deer combo. So as the two inbred baloney men continue to road rage at each other over the past I wait for the windshitter to appear mid and then I demonstrate that aside from the full head of hair you see under this top hat everything else about me looked like Mr. F and clean here. Then Varus starts CCing the enemy team who probably couldn't care less about this dude's insane internal micropenis complex as Ramus brings his case to the court as douche number one makes an attempt at sarcasm but in all honesty I thought he did get all seven of his kills while typing considering I haven't seen him move once during a fight yet so I just kinda figured his character was auto attacking the nearest target while he was two handing the keyboard but at least my other teammates were still giving me something to look forward to. That said I guess the two run out of actual topics to debate on so the argument hits staggeringly low IQ levels where I almost tabbed out to see if they were just reading through the parts of Brennan and Dale from Step Brothers where the writers very deliberately tailored the script to make both guys sound like socially underdeveloped pretentious pricks but unfortunately I get caught in the act of an ace up the a-hole attempt which lands me with no choice other than to varus this fight by filming my submission for the mannequin challenge as he educates us that he is both bad from behind and mildly dyslexic. And honestly going back and watching the replay of this sexually ungratified archer I was convinced Aston Kutcher was going to pop out and say I was being pranked because this man had like a friggin fetish for entering fights and then seemingly tabbing out hoping his AFK auto attacking ass would somehow pull him home the dub. Now up until this point I was impartial in this whole animosity over absolutely nothing encounter but when I saw the most pathetic raid on Rift Herald attempt NA going on I ran up to help only to see it was being shrub puppy guarded by a giant fed ox who I know was just fully erect ready for some fuzzy cuff bestiality esque bullshit if I walked up so I tried to make it abundantly clear that we could DP this arrogant antler shit stain and then resume his endless excursion but while he blatantly ignored my signs their team's backup arrived all the way from bumfuck Egypt and two girls one cup had nothing on two 
who alts one cop. But hey at least he got his rift herald right? And god bless this set the man didn't say a word all damn game but unfortunately he's just one of those people who uses his head to keep the rain out of his neck as it seemingly serves no other purpose. Varus then unexpectedly takes the cake for the dumbest thing said this game as he asks why Ramus is typing when no one is typing to him, while being the exact instigating dickhead that his statement just denied the existence of. But anyways I was seeing another GOAT v2 special in the making so I ulted early this time and thank god because the Duskblade passive snuck me past a mob that totally would have killed me if they saw me. And for context our arrogant archer remained steadfast in his ways of getting slain due to standing still like a silly putty brain push shit but according to him that death was actually due to him helping the idiot. Hey hey guys did you hear the one about the inting idiots that fought all game but then ended up rallying together in a team fight to focus down the fed enemy ABC? Yeah me either but I heard it was a banger of a story copium and update in case you all were unaware. Varus is just a piece of shit who won't stop complaining random smiley face and if you need more context about what he is complaining about please see exhibit A entitled someone needs to unplug these shitters keyboards they would be better off just right clicking at this point. Anyways I catch the world first Ramus losing a 1v1 to an AD champ in history hashtag I know backseaters that Yone does mixed damage as I send a cue that gets to the party too early before full lethal leasing a few autos for the kill. So then miraculously I think the two idiots agree on something but like crying twin babies that hate each other's fucking guts they get right back into it as Cetus films one more take for his gig at Trojan condoms for their commercial series illustrating the negative consequences that can arise from not wrapping your wiggy. And thus despite my best efforts trying to negate the effects of the League of Legends community, this one goes in the loss column and so as I elegantly provide my testimony to the end game lobby jury of people who don't care, I would just like to ask both Ramus and Varus to curb your absolutely appalling attitude.